Well, hello again, Niners. Rory here again um, with yet another Windows Mobile Development screencast. You're probably starting to think that I might be a bit obsessed, but um, yeah, well, okay, well, I am, um, and that's why I'm doing another one. And this time I'm starting on a, on, a, on a short series here of screencasts that focus specifically on features of Windows Mobile 5.0. So the ones that I've done so far, um, although I did them using Windows Mobile 5.0 emulators and a Windows Mobile 5.0 device, could have you know potentially run on a Windows Mobile 2003 uh, second edition device. Whereas in this case, I'm focusing specifically 100% on features that will only work with Windows Mobile 5.0 devices. And it just so happens that these features are, as you might expect from the latest and greatest, some of the coolest. Uh, this particular session is about an API called Snappy. That's another thing you have to know, is that a lot of the Windows Mobile 5.0 APIs have like the coolest acronyms ever for APIs. It stands for the uh, State Notification API, and it's what it does is it allows us to get information about the, the device we're using, whether it's a smartphone or a pocket PC or whatever. Um, it allows us to get it information that was previously pretty difficult to get, um, some of it extremely difficult to get. And now we can get to that information with very, very little difficulty. And we can even track the information. Okay, We can either go in for like a little, a little one-off, just pull some information out of this API, take a look at it, like to see, for example, the current um, battery charge state, or we could monitor uh, that same value. So as the battery charge level changes, we can monitor it. And once it hit, say, a certain crucial low level, um, we could act on it and you know, perhaps notify the user. It's, it's a great API. I'm considering this a level 200 um, course or screencast just because it's not really all that complicated and the, the API calls aren't complicated at all. You're going to get this stuff right off the bat. It'll make sense. Um, even though I've seen quite a few articles online so far that talk about Snappy, uh, I haven't seen many that make sense. But I promise you, I guarantee this is this is my thing. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this make sense to you. And if I don't, you can come to my apartment and poke me in the eye. Okay, you can't really do that. But I mean, okay. Anyway, too late now. So. To make this stuff work, like I said, this is uh, Windows Mobile 5.0 specific, which means that you absolutely must have the Windows Mobile 5.0 SDKs installed. If you want to do this for a uh, pocket PC, then that's fine. Grab the pocket PC SDK. If you want to do it for the smartphone, that's fine as well. So grab the smartphone SDK. Um, I personally, like I said in an earlier screencast, grabbed both just because uh, I happen to... Uh, well, I own a few different Windows Mobile devices, and I never travel with less than three, if that gives you some idea of uh, just what's wrong with me. And, uh, and I like to develop for both pocket PCs and smartphones, so I grab both of them. And these two shrinkster addresses uh, will get you to those two SDKs. So you just grab them, install them, you're good to go. And of course, you know you need to have Visual Studio 2005 so you can develop this stuff. So let's head on over to uh, VS2005, speaking of which, and uh, go up to File here, and we're going to create a new project. And this time, I've been doing uh, pocket PC applications for all the other screencasts I've done so far. And I thought I'd you know, mix it up a little bit and switch over to smartphone. So I'll be doing a smartphone app today. And let's see, I will call this Channel 9 Snappy Demo. Hit OK. And here we go. So if you've watched some of the earlier screencasts that I did, uh, you may recall that um, we had a pocket PC view here where we had a little pocket PC uh, skin and instead this time we've got a smartphone skin not really that much different you know when you when you when you think about it when you get right down to it um, so uh, so we have a, a very similar design time experience to that of the pocket PC um, and also I'm still going to be using uh, Sodi Pocket Controller Professional. So this is a view of my uh, smartphone, and I'm using an iMate SP5, which is the rough equivalent of the Singular 2125 or the T-Mobile SDA, um, just depending on, on what you're into and where you get your phones. There's, there's a few different incarnations of the same basic platform out there. I bought the iMate SP5 just because it was, it was one of the first out, and I absolutely had to have my hands on a Windows Mobile 5.0 phone. So, um, I can, uh, I can control it all here from Pocket Controller, just like I could with a Pocket PC. And uh, so I'll be using that for my demos. Now, the first thing you need to do if you want to use the uh, State Notification API is head over to your Solution Explorer, right click on References, and hit Add Reference. Now, if you followed the earlier instructions to download um, either the Pocket PC or the smartphone uh, Windows Mobile 5.0 SDK, then you should see um, 
these items. These are all um, Windows Mobile 5.0 SDKs. And something very interesting that, that people often notice during, during these demos is that the runtime version for a lot of these is actually 1.1. So you don't even require, um, you don't require the .NET Compact Framework version 2.0 to use Windows Mobile 5.0 features. That's an important distinction to make just because, uh, you know, Windows Mobile 5.0 is, is not brand new, but it's, it's relatively new, as is the .NET Compact Framework version 2.0. So it's natural to think that the two are, you know, kind of both uh, uh, required for each other. But, but in reality, you can, develop, you can develop Windows Mobile 5.0 applications using um, the .NET CF 1.1. I don't, just because I happen to like the .NET CF 2.0 uh, quite a bit better. Um, but uh, if, you don't have, if you don't have access to the .NET CF 2.0 for whatever reason, just remember you can use uh, version 1.1 of the runtime. So I'm going to set a reference here to the Microsoft Windows Mobile uh, assembly. And you need this because it contains some interfaces and base classes that are used in other uh, assemblies among the, the Microsoft Windows Mobile uh, uh, set here. And the next thing we want for Snappy is going to be the Microsoft Windows Mobile .status assembly, and that's it. So I'm going to hit OK. And now that I've got those added, um, I can do my usual little OCD obsessive renaming of form one to main form. There we go. And then I can follow up again with a little more um, OCD obsessive renaming, and this time I want to change the text of form one to snappy demo and there we are again okay now uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing about the the state notification api is that there's so much information that we can pull um, about the device that we're coding against and the easiest way to find out what information you can pull so before we write a lick of code here i just want to i just want to show you the list of what you can what you can grab from the from the well from snappy um, and to do that i'm just going to head over to the object browser here and if you don't, if you never used the object browser before, just hover to view and then um, select object browser here, uh, and it'll it'll give you this nice little list of uh, of the different namespaces uh, that we have access to. And in this case, I'm going to head down to the Windows Mobile .status namespace, and I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to look at the system property enumeration here, and this shows us uh, all the stuff that 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 we can learn about by using Snappy. Okay, so just like right here at the very very top. Um, we see that we can pull back information about what the current active application is. So as I click on a value here, um, I, get, I, get a little, I get a little bit of summary information that tells me what data is coming back and what the format is of that data. Because one of the things about Snappy is that data comes back in all sorts of different formats. And you, you, you sometimes have to engage in a little bit of trial and error before you figure out um, you know, just how that data is going to be coming back. So in the case of active application, we can expect that even though it's coming back as an object of type system.object, um, we're going to want to convert it to something else. We're going to want to cast it as something more appropriate. And uh, well, a an application is going to be a name, right? So the active application is going to be an application name. So we can assume that it's going to be a string. So uh, we know that when it comes back, we will convert it to a string. Um, we can scroll down here a bit and just look at the sheer volume of different uh, uh, things we can keep track of. Uh, camera present. OK, here's another one. Um, we can find out if, in fact, there is a camera um, in the device. And it just so happens that my device has a camera. So maybe that's one of the values I'll bring back in the demo. Don't know, just for kicks. But one of the things about camera present is that we can assume that it's going to come back probably as a bit value, you know, one or zero. Is the camera present or is the camera not present? Um, like, a, 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 as with all of the, the, the properties here, they're going to come back as system that object, and you do have to do, do some casting in order to get it to an appropriate data type. And in this case, yeah, we can pretty much rest assured that it's going to be either a Boolean or a bit value of some sort. Um, here's something that should make, uh, that should make people happy. Um, we can get back the number of uh, network connections. Now, I've done this talk live a few times, and when I ask members of the audience who have done some Windows Mobile development before using uh, uh, the .NET CF 1.1 and running on uh, Windows uh, Windows Mobile 2003, I asked them what it's like trying to figure out how many available connections there are, um, or even if there is an, av an available network connection. And everybody has some crazy hacky idea, you know, on 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 how they've gone about trying to determine this information because there's no easy way to do it. Well, now we have an easy way to do it, so that's great. We can get the total number of connections. We can get the number of of cellular cellular connections. We can get the number of Bluetooth connections. Uh, it's quite fantastic. 
we can find out if um, the, there is a cradle present, or in other words, if the device is currently cradled. Um, if I were to check this value right now, because I have my phone tethered to my laptop via uh, a USB cable, we would get a value back um, of one. Yes, in fact, there is a cradle present. Uh, we move on down, we can see how many uh, messages there are that are unread. We can find out the owner's email address, the name, owner notes. Um, we can find out uh, whether call barring uh, is enabled, whether call uh, forwarding is enabled, and so on. I mean, there's just so much stuff that we can get at here. I just, I just love it because it, it really simplifies um, um, a lot of tasks that we would normally have had to have p invoked for in the past. So uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to show you how to code for this stuff. And I'm going to show you the two different ways of doing it. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to just simply uh, grab a value once and examine it. And then I'm going to show you how to monitor a value over a period of time so you can keep track of a value as it changes. So I'll grab a label. I'll throw it out here on the form. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to head on over to Properties. And I'm going to change the text. And I guess we'll just check to see if uh, the device is cradled right now. So is device cradled? And then I'll grab another label and I'll drop that just below. And I will call this cradled. Then I'll clear the text here. And I'll grab one more. Um, let's see here. I'll just drop a label out here. Sometimes I just sit around and uh, believe it or not, and it's really kind of sad and nerdy of me, but I will just drop items out here on a form. And I'll just randomly kind of go back in the code and switch and, and check status of various uh, uh, elements of my phone. It's like, I mean, there are things I already really know, but I can't help it. I like having programmatic access, and I'm such a nerd that I'll go back and just check for fun. So let's see. I'm going to change the text here to um, battery level. So uh, you probably have a pretty good idea of what we're going to get back here. So I'll drop this label out here, and then I'll change the text. And I'll change the name to battery level. Then I'm going to add a button here, just called uh, get status. And I'm going to double click. All right, and I can move the toolbox out of the way there so we got a little more space. And I'm going to add a couple using statements. Oops, make sure to spell things right here, Microsoft.WindowsMobile. So I'll use that, and then Microsoft.WindowsMobile dot status. And so I'll head uh, right here in, in menu item one dot click. I'm just, just simply going to say, uh, let's see, what was the name of that first one? Cradled dot text equals system, oops, system state. Oh, I wish I could spell system state dot get value. And this is how you get a value, just like a one-off value here. Um, pass in a system property enumeration. And I'll pass in uh, cradle present, and then I'll say to string. It's that simple. And then the next one was, let's see, what did I stick out there on the form? Battery level. It's a little late, and I've been getting absolutely no sleep this week just because of all these screencasts I've been doing. It's been a lot of fun, but I've been sacrificing, um, well, my brain for it. So the next one is battery level dot text equals system state dot get value, and then system property. And let's see here. What is the property for that? There we go. Power battery strength. That's what we'll do. Not to string. And that's it. Now, believe it or not, you know, you look at these two simple little lines here. Uh, when I first started investigating Snappy, it took me forever to find out how to just grab a single value at a time because a lot of the people who are writing articles on it seem to be focusing, or at least at the time I was researching it, seem to have been focusing on uh, monitoring values rather than just how to get a, get a one-off value. And I think it's extremely valuable to get a one-off value, so I wanted to make sure you knew how to do this. So I'm going to save, and I'm going to build, make sure that everything's looking good here. OK, the build succeeded. And I'm going to switch from the smartphone emulator, which I could use, to the smartphone device. Save again, and we will hit debug. I'll head up to Pocket Controller and wait for the application to load. Now, um, smartphones are a little bit different than the Pocket PC in that I get asked uh, every single time I deploy if I want to allow this unsigned application to run. This is a good thing. Um, it's a security feature. It's a little bit of a pain. 
you know, for, for developers who are building and running, building and running, building and running, building and running. But, you know, in the end, would you rather have the convenience or would you rather have a secure device? I think I'd rather have a secure device. So I'm going to uh, hit the get status button down here and we'll just see what comes back. So is device cradled? The answer one is yes. So we could have converted that to a Boolean, for example. Um, and what's the battery level? 81%. So uh, we get that information, got it very easily. As you can see, it's not complicated at all. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, that was sort of a non-event kind of demo, but I'm serious. Like, I was pulling my hair out just trying to figure out how to get this one uh, simple value because my instinct was to think that I could do this. Um, cradled.text equals system property dot uh, cradle present, right? And then, you know, it's a string or a value or whatever. I thought I'd be able to do this, but that just doesn't work at all because it is just enumeration. And uh, I've had that same question from people before. Now, if you want to monitor um, a state over the lifetime of your application or over uh, a certain period of time, you can do that as well. And the way we do that is by creating an instance. Instead of just uh, calling one of the static methods of the system state class, we create an instance of system state. So I'll say system state, and I'm going to call this owner name state because this is an easy value for me to change. And uh, I'll just leave that up there. And then in main form, I will initialize it. So owner name state equals new system state. And we specify at this point, um, the system property that we want to monitor, which is going to be the owner name. And the next thing we do is owner name state dot changed. So we just handle the changed event. And uh, we tab a couple times. We let the IDE throw, uh, uh, write a little bit of code for us here. And what we're going to get is a change event args. Okay. So in reality, we could have a whole bunch of these different um, monitoring uh, 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 instances set up and we could all route them to the same handler because it's just going to come through with the same changed event args. Now there's going to be times when that's not going to make any sense when you want to keep these values distinct and everything but uh, but they all have the same signatures so that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to say uh, message box dot show um, new owner name and then I will concatenate e args dot new value dot to string. And that's it. That's all we have to do to monitor um, a value over the lifetime of the application. So I'm going to build, make sure that works, and it did. And I'm going to hit start so we can go into debug mode. So the deploy has started. It has succeeded, which means that I have to, again, confirm that I would like to run this uh, application, which could very well just erase everything on my phone and ruin my life and everything. But it's not going to because, well, I wrote it. And that's not the main reason. It's just that I happen to know from the simplicity of the code that it's not going to do that. I'm not saying that I am incapable of writing software that would completely mangle my phone. I could do that, especially if I were, you know, coding at, you know, four o'clock in the morning and I, and I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. But anyway, so uh, we have these values here. Uh, we've already seen that demo, so I'm not going to go back to that. Instead, I'm going to hit the home key here and I'm going to open up the start menu and I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to more, and I'm going to select owner information. And I'm going to modify my name right here. Ray Blythe is doing channel nine stuff. And then I'm going to hit done. And there we go. So we get the new owner name. Oh, I didn't even realize I misspelled owner. That's how tired I am. No big deal. So new owner name, Roy Blythe is doing channel nine stuff. So not only uh, were we able to monitor the change in that system value, but it happened, you might have noticed, uh, just about instantaneously, very, very quickly. So, uh, so that's great. So I'm going to hit OK. And since I do have some applications running on this phone um, uh, that required uh, my owner name to be consistent uh, in order for the registration keys to work, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that um, back to my original name. The bonus of this is that we get to see the demo one more time and we get to pay attention to just how quickly uh, the value is picked up. So just change it back to Ray Blythe and hit done. And there we go. New owner name or new owner name, Ray Blythe. So it happens very, very quickly. So we get this uh, just about real time um, notification of, of that value change. And if you're curious, uh, and I imagine that you are, um, these values are, are actually stored out in the registry. 
Um, at least as far as I can tell. There might be some that aren't, but, but from what I can tell, the values are stored on the registry of the phone. So that's just another little interesting thing to, to think about. So I'm going to hit stop, and that is Snappy in a nutshell. Once you know how to uh, grab um, a value, just in this very simple system state .get value one off mode, uh, uh, and once you know how to monitor um, a, va a value over the lifetime of your application by creating the system state object, instantiating it, and then specifying the uh, value that you want to watch, um, and then handling the change property. After, you, after you've done all that, you pretty much know uh, what you need to know about Snappy. So it's not terribly complicated. It's a really neat little API, very, very powerful. And frankly, I wish we had it on the desktop. But, uh, but then I wish we had a lot of the things from Windows Mobile 5 on the desktop, as you will see in some of the upcoming screencasts that show more features of Windows Mobile 5 So we'll head back to the PowerPoint. And as usual, if you have any questions, you can uh, get a hold of me at RoryB at Microsoft.com. Although, again, if you have a question, um, try leaving it, you know, just in the, in the Channel 9 post, because then everybody else will benefit from seeing it. Um, so so I'll, I'll do my best to answer, and I'll do, do my best to answer your emails. And uh, that's pretty much that. So keep your eyes peeled for the next couple of the screencasts. Um, the next one is going to be about uh, the Pocket Outlook object model, also pronounced POOM. See, so we've got Snappy and POOM, just incredibly cool names. And then after that screencast, uh, the next one I'm going to do is one in which we take a look at, uh, at some more Windows Mobile 5.0 features. So it's just going to kind of keep on going here for, for a little while, at least until I finally expire from lack of sleep. So thanks for watching another screencast, and, uh, and uh, I'll just keep them coming.